Back in the early 1970s, Steve Blass was a titan among pitchers. He played a pivotal role in securing a glorious victory for the Pittsburgh Pirates in the 1971 World Series against the Baltimore Orioles. In the following year, his talent also shone so brightly that he was named the runner-up for the National League Cy Young Award. Then, in an agonizing twist, he lost his once masterful ability to send a baseball hurtling toward the plate because of an illness. Even more sadly, he hung up his glove in 1975 and retired from the game he had once dominated. But then, what really is this disease that was so dreaded, and how many more players have had to deal with it? Well, here's a rundown of the most popular players who got the yips. Number 6. Rick Ankiel Rick Ankiel burst onto the baseball scene with resolute prowess in 2000, which was his inaugural full season in the big leagues. His performance was nothing short of remarkable, boasting an impressive 11-7 record and a stellar 3.50 ERA. It was a season that held the promise of a shining career. However, the fates are fickle in the world of sports. Ankiel's journey took a sudden, unexpected twist in the playoffs of that season. In Game 1 of the NLDS, he took the mound, silencing the opposition with a shutout through two innings. But then, the unthinkable occurred. In the third inning, he faltered, allowing four runs to score on two hits, four walks, and an astonishing five wild pitches. The game slipped from his grasp, and he was unceremoniously yanked from the mound. You're probably thinking now, what must have gone wrong, right? Well, Ankiel had the yips. But hey, what exactly are the yips? Sadly, this term refers to an informal malady, a movement disorder that takes root in the wrists. It's a force that triggers involuntary muscle spasms when an athlete attempts to execute a specific movement, shattering their precision and control. Even worse for some athletes, it's a mental disorder. The yips is an affliction that haunts not only baseball players but also golfers. And here's one fact about it. The term itself was coined by the legendary professional golfer Tommy Armour in the early 1900s. Now, back to our story about Ankyo. This player tried to remain undeterred, and he returned for Game 2 of the NLCS against the Mets, but his ordeal continued. After delivering just five pitches that mysteriously eluded the catcher, he was swiftly removed from the game, leaving a trail of unanswered questions behind. Plus, the following season, Ankiel's journey took a sobering turn as he found himself demoted to the minors. But that's not all. The struggling player would later also switch positions to a power-hitting outfielder. Indeed, this is not the kind of transition you see very often in baseball, so most people were shocked when it happened. In fact, there are rumors that Ankiel made the switch because he no longer had the confidence to perform as a pitcher. Whatever the case, though, this once phenomenal pitcher would go on to play the rest of his career as an outfielder till he eventually retired in 2014. Obviously, the disease dealt a huge blow to his career. Who knows, he might have been more successful if it wasn't for the yips. Truly, Steve Sachs's saga is one that leaves a bitter taste in the mouth. In 1982, he burst onto the baseball stage, capturing the limelight and earning the coveted National League Rookie of the Year award. His future appeared as bright as the sun, and he was a rising star in the world of baseball. However, the following year, in 1983, an inexplicable affliction struck the second baseman. A once routine and effortless task became a nightmarish ordeal, and for reasons unknown, the simple act of releasing the ball became an insurmountable obstacle for Sacks. However, this player was not one to yield to adversity. Through sheer determination and unwavering commitment, he clawed his way back from the abyss. In 1989, he achieved a remarkable feat, boasting the highest fielding percentage, 987, among all second basemen in the major leagues. But the yips had done its damage already, and Steve was never the man he ought to have been if the disease didn't strike at first. Chuck Knobloch's journey through the world of baseball can only best be described as a tale of two halves, marked by his early brilliance and the later struggles that defined his career. He burst onto the scene in Minnesota, where his star ascended rapidly, establishing him as one of the game's premier fielding second basemen. In 1991, his remarkable talent was recognized with the American League Rookie of the Year Award, and over time he blossomed into a four-time All-Star, becoming a cornerstone of the Twins. However, the game of baseball can be a fickle companion sometimes, and in 1998 he embarked on a new chapter with the New York Yankees. It was here that the specter of fielding issues began to haunt him. The pinnacle of this struggle arrived in June 2000 when, in a stark contrast to his past prowess, he made three throwing errors in just six innings. Plus, in an act of sheer frustration and self-awareness, he took himself out of the game against the White Sox, a sign that he acknowledged the gravity of the issue. 
Of course, you don't need to ask what happened, right? This guy got the yips. Well, although he would briefly return to his position at second base, the once unerring accuracy of his throws remained elusive. He was subsequently relocated to the outfield and designated hitter roles for the final two years of his career, including a memorable World Series run with the Yankees in 2000. Mark Wohlers, who was a towering presence on the baseball mound during the mid-1990s, struck fear into the hearts of opposing batters with his prowess as a closer. His dominance was undeniable, as he notched an impressive 97 saves for the Braves between 1995 and 1997. However, the relentless march of time can, many times, be unkind to athletes, and in 1998, Wohlers faced an abrupt and startling decline after getting the yips. His once unwavering control faltered, and his effectiveness came to a screeching halt. In just 20 and one-third innings, he walked in astounding 33 batters and unleashed seven wild pitches, sending his ERA skyrocketing to a staggering 10.18. Atlanta, in a desperate bid to address the issues plaguing Wohlers, made the difficult decision to send him down to AAA. However, his struggles persisted, as he walked an additional 37 batters in a mere 13 and a third innings. It was a humbling and bewildering descent for a player who had once been hailed as one of the game's most formidable closers. However, Wohlers refused to surrender to his setbacks. He went on to pitch in parts of five more seasons for various teams, including the Braves, Reds, Yankees, and Indians. But then, while he managed to regain some semblance of control, he never fully recaptured the dominance of his earlier years. Additionally, at this point, he was on a journey marked by elbow troubles that ultimately led to two Tommy John surgeries. Listen up now, folks. There was an enigma of a player in MLB known as Mackie Sasser who made waves across the baseball world. Sadly, though, this former Mets catcher was constantly yoked to the relentless grip of the yips, a condition that eluded resolution during his professional career. It all began in 1989, when people noticed that each time Sasser received a pitch, his arm would hesitate, stuttering, and pump faking several times before he could release the ball back to the pitcher. His case of the yips was quite severe, but the Mets were compelled to adapt. So, slowly but surely, Sasser was shifted to the outfield or first base, his role as a catcher slipping away. His career, which once saw him log a career high of 100 games for New York in 1990, would never reach that pinnacle again. Five more seasons with the Mets, Mariners, and Pirates saw a sporadic and waning presence for this player on the field. Luckily, although he exited professional baseball by the end of 1995, Sasser finally overcame the yips and embarked on a journey that led him to success as a coach in the collegiate ranks. No doubt, this man's legacy extends beyond the diamond, especially when you consider that he has reached out to others who are afflicted with the yips, serving as a staunch advocate for therapy and sports psychology. In a quirky twist of fate, Sasser's struggles with the yips are believed to have inspired the character Rube Baker in the film Major League Two. And now, who else should be at number one on this list if not the enthralling Steve Blass? Once a stalwart presence on the pitching mound for the Pittsburgh Pirates during the golden era of 1966-72, Steve Blass was a paragon of consistency. Of course, his prowess culminated in a dazzling all-star appearance in 1972. But the zenith of his career came during the intense showdown of the 1971 World Series against the formidable Baltimore Orioles. In Game 7 of that series, the spotlight shone brightly on Blass as he delivered a pitching performance for the ages. With steely resolve, he hurled a complete game masterpiece, allowing just four hits and a nail-biting contest that culminated in a 2-1 victory for the Pirates. It was a defining moment in his career, etching his name in the annals of baseball history. However, the ebb and flow of a baseball career can be as unpredictable as the wind. After the 1972 season, Blass experienced a dramatic downturn. His ERA skyrocketed, soaring above nine, and his once pinpoint control abandoned him. In an astonishing twist, he walked 84 batters in just 88.2 innings, which was a stark contrast to the masterful control he had once wielded. So how did things get so bad? Well, he came down with a case of the yips. Sadly, too, his case was so severe that the condition also became known as the Steve Blast disease. The disastrous 1973 campaign proved to be a turning point from which Blast could not recover, and with a heavy heart, he hung up his glove in 1974, marking the end of an era on the pitcher's mound. No thanks to the yips.